Praise the Lord. Let's look into God's Word for a few minutes this morning. I want to dig back into the topic of integrity. Let's see if we can go a little deeper and a little further today with it. I want to read some scriptures pretty quickly. Some that we read last Sunday, just foundational, since this is kind of a part two of my message. Integrity matters. Integrity matters. Psalm 25, verse 21 says, May integrity and uprightness protect me because my hope, Lord, is in you. Remember, when you in your own personal study, and I hope some of you will go further in studying this topic, the Bible has a lot to say about integrity, but it will use the word upright in some translations of scriptures. It will use the word blameless. These are all the same words, and they're the word for integrity in scripture. Psalm 37, 18 and 19, the blameless, the people of integrity, spend their days under the Lord's care and their inheritance will endure forever. Look what integrity does for you. We spend our days under the Lord's care and your inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. They will not deteriorate. They will not lack. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. Integrity does that in our lives. Integrity. Psalm 41, verse 12. Because of my integrity, you uphold me and set me in your presence forever. Wow. All because of integrity. So Proverbs. Let's shift to Proverbs now. Chapter 2, verse 7. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless, or in other words, to those who have integrity. A shield, a protection. Proverbs 10, 9. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. Proverbs 11, verse 3. These are just a few scriptures that talk about integrity. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their, and I read this verse last Sunday, duplicity or their double-mindedness is what that means. Folks, integrity matters. No, you cannot watch popular news today and get the message that integrity matters. As a matter of fact, you'll get a message that integrity does not matter. I mean, woe to, woe to them when they call evil good and good evil. Let me tell you, that's America today. America celebrates evil and denigrates and, 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 and accuses and, 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 and mocks good. Integrity matters. Integrity is rewarded. Integrity is the thing God notices in your life above anything else. Integrity lights the way for you. Integrity guides your footsteps. Integrity, a life that is lived blameless and upright, a life that is lived up under the shadow of the cross of Jesus Christ, a life that is lived covered by the grace that Jesus came to provide for us. What is integrity? A life that lives by the moral code of holy scripture no matter what no matter what i want to now shift i read you a definition from the book of psalms i felt like the one of the best definitions in the old covenant for integrity i'm going to shift to the new testament the apostle paul gives us a wonderful detailed definition of what it is to live and walk in integrity and it's found in romans chapter 12 and we're going to start reading in verse 9. Romans 12, let's start reading in verse 9. Love must be sincere. People of integrity love sincerely. Hate what is evil. Hold on to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another 
above yourselves. Wow. Never be lacking in zeal. Keep your spiritual fervor, your spiritual uh, passion and vision serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. And I believe Paul is defining what integrity is here. Verse 14, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to take revenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, even if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap, you will pile up burning hot coals on his head. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. I bet you didn't know how much God does, just really does have to say about integrity in our lives. Integrity still matters. Don't you ever apologize in, to anyone, anytime, anywhere for being a person of integrity. Never be ashamed of having integrity. Never defend your integrity. Be sure, though, that your integrity is consistent across every area of your life. Now I'm going to get real down to where we live for the next few minutes and very practical about what I mean by, by, the, by what I just said. Make sure your integrity runs across every area of your life. For example, marital integrity. That is still the standard of Holy Scripture. Well, Pastor, you must not read the statistics I read. The divorce rate is the same in the church as it is in the world. The standard of Scripture is, still remains the same. Honor your spouse. Prefer him or her to all others. Worship together. Parent together if you have children. Communicate together. Serve together. Marital integrity. Love each other till death do you part. That's still God's way. That's still the best way to do marriage. So have marital integrity. Now I'm just summarizing. i got to move through this quick. Have sexual integrity. Oh, don't say that. Well, we have problems in that area in the church because nobody does want to say anything. Abstinence before marriage, fidelity in marriage. Keep your pants on before marriage. Do I need to break that down any more than that? I want every generation to understand what I'm saying. <laughs> How many in the body of Christ end up shipwrecked 
in their lives due to a lack of sexual integrity. Folks, this is a whole lot bigger than just a dirty little secret in the church that we don't want to talk about. That's the reason why it is one of the number one moral issues within the clergy of America today. I don't need to go any further. We know in our own local area of such falls from grace among some leaders in the, because of this. Stay faithful to your spouse. Financial integrity. Now, I could really park right there for a while. Pay your tithe and give your offering with joy and gladness in your heart. And, you know, the interesting thing is, is that that Romans definition refers to so many of these. You can go back and kind of cross-check. It makes reference to so many of these little categories that I'm breaking out for you this morning. Have financial integrity. Have integrity with the resource God has entrusted you with. Pay your taxes. Don't cheat the IRS as wicked as they are. Because Jesus said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. Well, I pay my tithe for sure, but I really don't pay my tax. Well, no, I, would ma I make sure the IRS gets theirs, but where are you with your tithe? Is God getting his? Because Jesus made it very clear you got to do both if you're a person of integrity. you got to walk in rendering or giving unto God what belongs to Him. Giving unto the government. doesn't mean that you are endorsing the government. There is very little ethics in our government today. Very little. Honesty, very little integrity, unfortunately. The Bible tells us to, here's, here's another thing about financial integrity, lend. Lend to those in need, do not charge them any interest, and, and it goes even further. Don't really even expect them to pay it back. Are you kidding? I've got to forgive that. So-and-so hasn't paid me. Lend and don't even expect it to be paid back. That's what a person of integrity does if they have financial integrity. Bless those who persecute you. Bless them. Bless them. Lend to your enemies, even your enemies. If your enemy needs a loan and you can give them a loan, is that, would that be considered blessing them? It'd be considered blessing them. It would. Business integrity. You small business people, you career people, don't miss that class that's coming up real soon with Pastor Christie and, and Yuvi. Kingdom Business Builders. You heard, you heard that in our video. You want to be a part of that. Business integrity. Honor your contracts. Stand behind your work. Keep God first in your company or in your career. Because here's the thing. If you build His kingdom, He'll build yours. If you put his business first, he'll put your business first. But if you put your business first, oh well, God's like, okay, go, ha have at it. Do the best you can with that. But if you'll put his business first, he'll put your business first. If you'll put his kingdom first and build it, he'll build yours for you. Business integrity, educational integrity. Don't be cheating on those exams. Don't be buying in the black market. The, the, uh, Miss Ingrid could probably enlighten us on that. Don't be buying online all the answer keys that have been stolen and, and, and sold by somebody's website or whatever. It's all kinds of ways. Don't plagiarize if you're in college or in a university or in high school. If you're writing a paper, first person, you are saying these are my thoughts. They better be your thoughts. Ever since I started teaching for Southeastern University, I'm having to be so much more versed and aware of all of these tricky little ways that university students will try to beat the system and 
copy from some website and not notate that it, they got it from where they got it from. Have educational integrity. Respect your teachers. Wow, one, one amen. I thought we had more. Res- respect your educators. Respect your homeschool parent. <laughs> um, be on time. Turn in your assignments. Educational integrity. And that's at all levels of life. I mean, I'm still in school, probably in school till the day I die. But anyway, uh, I want to keep developing myself. Uh, Conversational integrity. Mean what you say and say what you mean. And then by all means, be sure you do it. Don't let gossip cross your lips. It's funny, I was talking to somebody the other day and they, they were asking me if I knew of a certain situation here in a local church and I, I did not know about it. And, oh, a pastor, and the person just stopped and went, right now, let me, okay, no, okay, this is not gossip, this is factual. I thought well, I had a lot of respect for the person to pause and just make sure that, that what they were about to tell me was, was public knowledge and was not some seek over the telephone behind the you know, closed doors kind of thing. Conversational integrity. Don't offend with your words. Edify and build up one another. And of course, spiritual integrity. Of course, of course. Take care of your inner man. Be in God's house when you're supposed to be in God's house. Bring your children to God's house. Bring your grandchildren to God's house. When it's time to praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Yeah, wow. When it's time to pray, let's pray. When it's time to give, let's give. When it's time to serve, let's serve. When it's time to sacrifice, let's sacrifice. When you put God first in these areas of worship in your spiritual life, you give to the needs of the kingdom, He will give to the needs of your kingdom. Let's have spiritual worship, faith integrity. Because integrity will reward you. Integrity will keep you. Integrity will feed you in the day of famine. Integrity will protect you in the day of battle. Integrity will comfort you in the day of loss. When everything is being shaken, as I talked about last Sunday, you will not be shaken if you walk in integrity, upright and blameless before God. Now, we're going to turn to Genesis chapter 39. I want us to look at one of the greatest examples, I believe, in all of the Bible of a person of integrity. And it's the story of the life of Joseph. Now, who was Joseph? Okay, let's back up and let's, let's set the scene here a little bit to, so that we all understand who Joseph was. Joseph was the youngest son of Jacob. He was the grandson of Isaac and the great-grandson of Abraham. That's who Joseph was. Joseph had a dream. God revealed some things to Joseph as to how he was going to use Joseph to save his entire family during a famine. Joseph was his father's favorite. The youngest, he made him a special cloak, a special coat. If you grew up in Sunday school, the coat of many colors is what we grew up singing about or learning about with Joseph. His brothers hated him for it. They conspired to, to, uh, to uh, uh, fake his tragic death. They threw him in a pit. They killed an animal. They took his coat, ripped it up, put the animal's blood all over it, brought it to their father and said, Oh, it's so tragic. Joseph was taken in the night by a lion and eaten and killed, and this is all that's left of him or all we could find. And it wasn't true. The, the slave owners came along. The merchants came along, found him in the pit, pulled him up out of the pit, God began to give him favor. And let's just pick up the story here. 
Joseph finds himself now being released. He'd been in prison. He finds himself being released from, I'm not, I'm not prison, but being sold as a slave. He's been sold as a slave, and a man named Potiphar comes along and buys him and puts him in, in, in his service in his household. And this is where we pick up Genesis 39, verse 1. Now, Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of the Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph, so he prospered. And he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, here's his integrity already. When the master saw that the Lord was with Joseph, And that the Lord gave him success in everything he did. Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant, like his personal assistant. Potiphar put him in charge of his whole house. He entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his house and all that he owned, look at this, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. My friend, the business you work for ought to be blessed because you work there. I said the company you work for should be blessed if you're a person of integrity working for that company. God will bless the whole thing because the company's blessing, guess what, is your blessing. Verse, uh, the blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. Now verse 6. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care, with Joseph in charge. He did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Joseph was a man of integrity that God had blessed and prospered in in an unbelievable way. That everything he touched blessed. He, He had integrity before the Lord and God honored and blessed his life in every area, and then a real test is about to come for him. Oh, my, my, my. Let's read on. Verse 8, or verse 7. Verse 7. Now Joseph... Oh, it's there. Oh, y'all read ahead of me. Anyway, let me read it. Now Joseph was well-built and handsome... Oh, the curse of being so well built. And, but Joseph, pray for those that are well, no. Joseph was a good looking dude. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of him and said, come to bed with me. Look at verse 8, but he refused. There's a point to this, stay with me. I'm getting to it. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. And here we go. I said all that to get to this. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God. And that is the litmus test for every temptation the devil throws your way. How could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? That person that falls into the, or, 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 or steps into the, accepts, if you will, the temptation to, to break the fidelity of marriage, to betray their spouse in some way, how then could I do this wicked thing and sin against God? See, we've lost that. We've certainly lost that in America. We don't ask that question anymore. I'm not going to steal from the company. How could I do that wicked thing and sin against God? I'm not going to look at her, him, sleep with him or her when I'm married to someone. How could I do that wicked thing and sin against God? We, as people of God and as a church in this nation, we have got to come back to that standard in every area of our lives. How could I choose? 
choose this sin? How could I compromise in this area and sin against God? Well, now, Pastor, if I did that, it's not going to hurt anybody. It hurts God. Well, nobody's going to know about this. God is going to know. Well, this won't offend anybody. God will be offended. Well, 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 this is nobody's business. It's God's business. Well, no, no, nobody else heard what I said. God heard what you just said. No, nobody's gonna, this is not gonna matter. Nobody's gonna. It matters to God. How can I do this thing and sin against the Lord my God? What happens in a nation that no longer asks that question? I don't care what your political affiliation is. I'm going to pause right here. Oh, I might get some cards and letters and emails on this. But I'm fixing to say it anyway. I don't know, and I don't care what your political affiliation is. If what is being reported about Planned Parenthood is true, that is the most barbaric, godless, uncivilized, without moral conscience or excuse action any organization in this country could possibly do. There I said it. Selling human body parts in an underground black market medical industry or whatever you want to call it. May God have mercy upon us as a nation. That cannot be defended. It is indefensible. Because we no longer as a country say or ask the question, how could we do this thing and sin against the Lord our God upon whose name this nation was built? On another note, when professional sports figures destroy evidence during an ongoing investigation and continue to defend themselves and claim their innocence, what, where, how, how far have we fallen as a country? We so revere and worship celebrities in this country over God. So anyway... I said that too. What happens in your own faith if you stop asking that question? How could I do this thing and sin against the Lord my God? I, I, I want to I invite you to join what I'm going to call a Joseph Initiative. People of God when faced with choices, certainly when faced with temptation. Temptation to sin, not temptation to have the cheesecake or the apple pie. Temptation to sin. Ask yourself this question, it will protect you, oh my. How could I do this wicked thing and sin against the Lord my God who forgave me, who loves me, who blesses me, who heals me, who directs me, who increases me, who speaks to me, who comforts How could I do this thing and sin against the Lord my God? The Joseph Initiative. I pray as a church, everybody in this room <clears throat> will sign up in the Spirit with God. I will not do this wicked thing and sin against the Lord my God. We must not allow integrity to become irrelevant as it has in, a na in our nation. We must not allow it 
in the house of God, in the community of faith. We must not allow it in a nation where dishonest scales, remember we read that from Proverbs? Dishonest scales, rigged systems, manipulated markets seem to be the new standard for success where calling good evil and evil good will actually get you rewarded. For doing what seems right in your own eyes is applauded and celebrated. <clears throat> Bruce Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner, I don't know what has happened in this country. We're living lavishly and extravagantly. Get you into the club. In a culture where dishonest gain is the motivation among so many of our leaders, let us hold high a standard of integrity that will scream out, how can we do such a wicked thing and sin against the Lord our God? It'll protect you in every area of your integrity. I'm not going to steal money. Not that I might not get away with it. Maybe I could, but not with God. He saw it. He sees it. I have sinned against the Lord my God. I'm not going to deliberately run somebody off the road out here in Loxahatchee on these dirt roads where nobody would ever see it or know it but me. Because I'm not going to do such a wicked thing and sin against the Lord my God. He sees it. Folks, it has got to matter that we, whether or not we offend God, our God, our Savior, our Lord, it's got to matter. Whether or not we grieve the one that, that bought us, the one that rescued us, the one that redeemed us, the one that restored us, the one that delivered us, the one that set us free, the one that increased us, the one that multiplied us. I will not do this wicked thing and sin against the Lord my God. Hallelujah. I will not. Integrity will keep you. Integrity will protect you. Integrity is what Joseph had. Now, you read the rest of the story. The woman didn't take no for an answer. She grabbed a hold of him physically. And he had to let, let her pull the cloak, the coat, the shirt, whatever, off of his back. And he Ran, my friend, if all you can do is run the other way, take off running. In order to protect your integrity and not sin against the Lord, your God. That was a test for Joseph, and he passed with flying, flying colors. He passed well, and he moved from that situation. Yeah, he went to the prison. God honored him, blessed him, promoted him, brought him out of the prison, gave him a dream for the king. He, he interpreted the king's dream. The king made him second in all of the kingdom. Second to the Pharaoh was, 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 was Joseph. God's promise came to pass, but he passed every test along the way and maintained his integrity. I'm reminded of what I read last week about Job. Job said, I'm determined I'm not going to sin with my lips. I'm not going to sin with my lips. And he did not. And he maintained his integrity no matter what. And God restored double, double, double what Job had because of his integrity. Integrity will shelter you, will cover you, will hide you. I want, I want to close with this. It's just a little inspiration here at the end of this because I know some of y'all are like, oh, integrity. I know, I know you're all glad I didn't stay in the category of sexual integrity very long. <laughs> Sometimes the battle is such that you cannot even advance the line. Sometimes the darts and arrows of the enemy are flying in such a way that you cannot push forward 
and gain ground. Sometimes, with the armor on, Paul tells us that we've done all we can do to stand in Ephesians 6. Just stand there with the full armor on. The Amplified Bible says, Having done all the crisis demands, stand firmly in your place. Stand, therefore, hold your ground. <clears throat> in full battle gear, sometimes, church, all we can do is stop, stand firmly in place, and hold your ground, for the Lord Himself is going to fight that battle for you. Sometimes the commander gives the order, hold your position. The battle is raging. It's hot. It's too heated. Don't stick your head above the surface of the foxhole. Just stand, hold your position, and don't move. So somebody in here needs to stand. You have maintained your integrity. You know you have not compromised your integrity. Stand. Do not move. You've got the battle gear of the armor of God on. You cannot advance right now. Hold the position. Stand firmly in place. And you are going to see the salvation of the Lord. Because God promises something. He promises us something. People of integrity throughout the Holy Scripture that the battle is not yours anyway. It is His. He tells us time and time again, you aren't even going to have to fight this one. I got this for you. He tells me that He will cloak, C-L-O-A-K, cloak me. He will hide me. He will cover me under the shadow of His wing and the enemy will not even be able to find you the enemy will pass you by because the Lord himself has hidden hidden you because of your integrity you are hidden for in the day of trouble Psalm 27 verse 5 he will hide me in the shelter in the secret place of his tent will he Hide me. Psalm 64 verse 2. Hide me, O God, from the secret counsel and the conspiracy of the ungodly, from the scheming of evil doers. Let me tell you this right now before we go home. When God decides to hide you. <laughs> I said, when God decides to hide you, can't no devil in hell find you? When God decides to hide you under the shadow of His protection. When God hides me, can't no depression find me? When God hides me, can't no poverty or lack find me? Can't no thief find me? find me when God hides me can't no accusation find me can't no offense find me I know I'm not talking right I'm talking well anyway I'm going back to my roots when God hides me can't no poverty no no lack no sickness find me for in the day of trouble he will hide me in his shelter in the secret place he will hide me from the schemes of the devil hallelujah So I got a revelation about the armor of God. It was new for me. You know why you need to keep the armor of God on? Because sometimes it's a cloaking device. Where's all the star fans, star Trek, star whatever fan? You know what I mean? Sometimes the armor shields up, cloaking device engaged. And they just disappear from the enemy's radar. My friend, keep the armor of God on because you never know when God's going to say, hit the cloaking device. My son, my daughter is in the heat of a battle. The arrows are flying all around them. They've done all they can do. I'm going to hide them away until the enemy passes by. And so he cloaks me when I'm wearing the armor of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am preaching myself so blessed, I've got to loosen my tie. It's about to choke me to death. God will hide you. He will 
hide you. If you will keep your integrity, he will hide you. Hallelujah. I'm not even going to have to fight in this one. I got this one for you. Now keep the armor on. Paul said, in the full armor, you've, you've done all you can now. Stand there. <laughs> Just stand there. God's about to engage the cloaking, the cloaking defense, and you will just simply disappear to the enemy's radar. You will be gone. And when God hides you, when God cloaks you, there ain't nothing that hell has that's going to even find you, let alone attach itself to you. Hallelujah. Let's stand together. Let's stand. Father, oh Lord, in the armor we hide ourselves. We put on your armor, Lord, you cloak. There are times you just hit the button, you engage the cloaking defense, the cloaking device, and you hide me away. Lord, you, you hide us from the financial issue. You hide us from that, 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 that uh, dishonest uh, partner. You hide us, Lord, from the wrong company. You hide me from going to the wrong school. You hide me, oh God, from accusation, criticism, judgment, gossip. You hide me from sickness, disease, from bacteria, from viruses. You hide me. You hide me, Lord. You hide me in my integrity. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. No, it didn't happen to you because God hid you. He hid you. He hid you away. He protected you and kept you from it. Thank you, Father, that you cloak us more times than we even realize. Lord, I looked up from the radio in the nick of time, and I didn't rear in that car. You hid me. You protected me. You kept me. You kept me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. <clears throat> thank you, Father. Thank you for hiding me. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me, for cloaking me. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You hide us away. You hide us. And I thank you, Lord, today. I thank you, Lord. I know you've hidden this church from things. I know you've hidden us from things. I know you've hidden us, oh God. From things, you've kept us from things. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you that at times my armor is a cloaking device and it hides me and keeps me from the off, keeps me off the enemy's radar altogether. Hallelujah. <clears throat> thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being a part of our online church family today. I know God has spoken a fresh word into your life, and we celebrate that with you. If you would like to contact our church, leave a prayer request or a comment, please go to our Facebook page or to our church website and do that. We would love to hear from you. If you are ever in the Palm Beach, Florida area, we would love to have you worship with us. Our worship services are every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. And we invite you to come if you are ever in this area. God bless you.